Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Pathways to Removing Obstacles to Housing, or Pro-Housing, Notice of Funding Opportunity webinar number three. Today, we're covering data resources and tools for identifying priority jurisdictions in the pro-housing competition. My name is Colin Cross. I'm a Community Planning and Development Specialist here at HUD, and I'm going to be moderating today's webinar. A few housekeeping items we want to go over before we get started. Uh, today's webinar will be a hybrid session with both live and recorded materials. Um, all participants are muted during the presentation, so we ask that you please submit your questions using the chat feature. And when you use the chat feature, make sure to send your question to all panelists. Uh, that way our presenters can see the question and respond. Today's agenda begins with introductory remarks from HUD leadership followed by a data deep dive, and uh, we will leave time at the end for a live Q&A session. Um, next slide, please. So this is the third in a series of weekly webinars that we're running covering HUD's Pro Housing NOFO, or Notice of Funding Opportunity. Uh, this series of webinars is intended for potential pro housing applicants, and it provides participants with an overview of pro housing and the pro housing application requirements. Uh, webinar recordings will be posted on the Pro Housing webpage, as well as links to future webinars. So if you visit the Pro Housing webpage today, that first recording, uh, so webinar number one on the NOFO walkthrough, uh, that recording as well as the slides in that presentation are now posted. Uh, last week's webinar, webinar number two, focused on a variety of legal uh, requirements in the appendices and regulations. And that week's webinar is under processing by our HUD web team and will be posted on the Pro Housing webpage shortly. So please keep an eye out uh, on the Pro Housing webpage. Um, with all that said, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for the afternoon. Uh, Claudia Monterosa serves as the Deputy Assistant Secretary, or DAS, for grant programs in HUD's Office of Community Planning and Development. Uh, as DAS, uh, DAS Monterosa oversees affordable housing and community development programs, including the Community Development Block Grant Program, the Home Investment Partnerships Program, Housing Trust Fund, and CDBG Disaster Recovery Funds, in addition to department-wide energy and environmental policy. DAS Monterosa brings decades of nonprofit and public sector experience, incorporating social justice, grassroots organizing, and equity to her work at HUD. Previously, Ms. Monterosa served as the Chief Housing Officer for the City of Los Angeles. In 2017, her efforts there led to the creation of the city's first permanent local source of funding for affordable housing via the adoption of the Affordable Housing Linkage Fee. In that same year, she led the city's successful adoption of the Assessment of Fair Housing under HUD's new Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing Rule. Das Monterosa holds an MA in Urban Planning from the University of California, Los Angeles, and a BA in Political Science and Latin American and Iberian Studies from UC Santa Barbara. Das Monterosa, welcome. Claudia Monterosa, and I'm the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Grant Programs at HUD. Thank you for joining today's webinar on data resources and tools. We're so excited to announce the preview of the Pathways to Removing Obstacles to Housing or Pro Housing for short. This is HUD's new and exciting new notice of funding opportunity that makes $85 million available to address affordable housing barriers. Pathways to removing the obstacles to housing or Pro Housing supports communities that are actively taking steps to remove barriers to affordable housing, such as barriers caused by outdated zoning, land use policies or regulations, inefficient procedures, gaps in available resources for development, deteriorating or inadequate infrastructure, lack of neighborhood amenities, challenges to preserving existing housing stock, such as increasing threats from natural hazards, redevelopment pressures, or exploration of affordability requirements. For the first two webinars in this series, walk us through the NOFO and provide more detailed information on the legal in program requirements. These have been recorded and are available on the Pro Housing website. We will insert the link in the chat. Today's webinar focuses on the measures used to determine acute demand for affordable housing. 
All of us know the extreme pressures facing many communities as they try to meet the demand for housing. And crucially, housing that is affordable to those who are most cost burdened and vulnerable. The Biden Harris administration's housing supply action plan recognizes these pressures and the urgent need to create and preserve housing to ensure that families, especially low and moderate income families in communities of color have access to opportunities that come with stable and affordable rental housing in attainable home ownership. Priority under this notice of funding opportunity will be given to applicants who demonstrate a commitment to and progress towards overcoming local barriers to affordable housing and to those who have an acute demand for affordable housing as directed in the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023. HUD is providing applicants with an easy to use data resource for jurisdictions to review a housing demand factors, which include affordable housing not keeping pace with population growth, insufficient affordable housing, and widespread housing cost burden. We will be joined by Greg Miller, who will walk us through the definition of acute housing demand and how applicants can find out if they are a priority jurisdiction under this factor. As you can tell, we have lots to cover today. Thank you so much for joining us to learn more about this exciting funding opportunity, and we hope to see your application and submit it soon. Thank you so much to our Deputy Assistant Secretary for Grant Programs, Claudia Monterosa. Next on the agenda, we have Greg Miller, a Program Analyst for Policy Development with HUD's Office of Policy Development and Research. Greg is going to walk us through how priority jurisdictions are determined for the pro-housing competition. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Today we're gonna to be talking about priority jurisdictions for the pro-housing notice of funding opportunity, both how we calculate and how we determine priority status. I'm Greg Miller, a program analyst in policy development and research at HUD, and I've helped with determining these calculations for priority status. What are pro-housing grants for? The Pathways to Removing Obstacles to Housing, or pro-housing, is a competitive grant being administered by HUD. Pro-housing seeks to identify and remove barriers to affordable housing production and preservation. And it uses the Community Development Block Grant statutory and regulatory framework. For the purpose of this presentation, we're interested in who HUD is prioritizing in the pro-housing competition. HUD will prioritize applicants that can demonstrate two things. The first is progress and a commitment to overcoming local barriers to facilitate the increase in affordable housing production and preservation. And the second is an acute demand for housing affordable to households with incomes below 100% of the area median income. The second is the one we're going to focus on in today's presentation. How do we determine which jurisdictions have an affordable housing need? So this is one of the review criteria rating factors. And you'll see it in the NOFO listed under A2. Do you have acute demand for housing? What are your remaining affordable housing needs? And how do you know? Do you have an acute demand? You will be awarded 10 points if your application primarily services what we call a priority geography that has an affordable housing need greater than the threshold calculation for one of three measures. And this presentation will go over what those threshold calculations are and how we measure these measures but for now, you have to know these three measures are affordable housing, not keeping pace with population, insufficient affordable housing, and widespread housing cost burden or substandard housing. HUD has provided a spreadsheet to help identify each of these geographies on the website for the Pro Housing NOFO, and we will go over how to use that calculation and that spreadsheet at the end of this presentation. As I mentioned, priority jurisdictions, you, you will get 10 points awarded for being a priority jurisdiction. This is binary. You either get the 10 points or you do not. And this is determined by scoring on any of one of three measures of acute housing demand, as mentioned before. How are these thresholds determined? Thresholds are determined at the place and the county level. And so priority jurisdiction status is if you are able to meet the threshold for any of the one of three, one of the three measures. You can meet that measure by either being within the top 10% nationally and that's computed using only jurisdictions or, or similar level jurisdictions with populations greater than 50,000, 
or of being within the top 5% of your state with no population cutoff when computing those thresholds. All these calculations are done using the comprehensive housing affordability strategy data, which are HUD special tabulations of American Community Survey data and are available on the HUD website. Before we go forward into defining these, these measures more, we, we have to lay out some broader definitions. HUD area median family income, or HAMFI as I'll refer to it throughout the presentation, refers to a HUD special calculation for each jurisdiction to determine fair market rents and income limits for HUD programs. HAMFIs are not necessarily the same as other median incomes, such as simple census numbers, because there are a series of adjustments that are made when HUD computes the HAMFI. There's also affordable and available units. These are units that are both affordable to low income or median income or 100% or HAMFI families, but are either vacant or not occupied by higher income households. We'll go more in depth on that in a second. And then there's also housing cost burden. For the purposes of this NOFO, we define housing cost burden as spending more than 50% of household income on housing costs. This is not the usual 30% number used in this NOFO. So there are three factors. Affordable housing not keeping pace. For this factor to calculate, we use households under 80% HAMFI thresholds, and we compare trends of population growth from 2009 to 2019 with trends in housing supply from 2009 to 2019. There's insufficient affordable housing. For this one, we look at households under 80% HAMFI and compare the number of affordable and available units to the number of households at that 80% HAMFI level. And then finally, we look at widespread housing cost burden or substandard housing. This is among households under 100% HAMFI and we calculate the prevalence of housing problems for those households. So first, the affordable housing not keeping pace. This is the calculation method we use, but first we need to understand what affordable and available means. At the bottom, you see that this is the number of housing units, both affordable to 80% HAMFI households and available to 80% HAMFI households. And what we mean by available here is we want to make sure that this unit is not occupied by a household that is greater than 80% HAMFI, because we know a lot of our jurisdictions have that going on. So we want to make sure that there is both affordable units and that they're available. And so in order to make sure that that affordable housing is keeping pace with population change, we compare the rate of population and the rate of affordable and available housing. The greater you score here, the more likely it is that your housing is not keeping pace with population and that your affordable and available units, particularly for the 80% HAMFI households that we care about here, are not keeping pace with population change. The second factor is insufficient affordable housing. And so for this factor, we're looking at households and the number of households at 80% HAMFI, and we're dividing by the number of affordable and available units for 80% HAMFI households. A greater number here means that you have more households than you do affordable and available units for 80% HAMFI thresholds. And so greater, a greater threshold here means you have insufficient affordable housing. And the third and final factor is widespread housing cost burden or substandard housing. Here, we do the number of 100% HAMFI households experiencing housing problems and divide by the number of 100% HAMFI households. A housing problem here is lack of complete plumbing or kitchen facilities, overcrowding, or greater than 50% cost burden. So if a household unit has any one of those three measures, they're included in that numerator. And the higher the numerator is and the smaller the denominator, that means you have a higher prevalence of widespread housing cost burden or substandard housing, which is what we use for the calculations. And so those are the three calculations and how they're done. So now it's the question of how do you determine if you fall within one of those buckets? In order to do that, you will pull up the spreadsheet on the pro-housing NOFO, the list of priority geographies. And here on the list of priority geographies, you'll see that we have jurisdiction state county or place and priority geography. If you find your place and you find priority geography says yes, you will qualify for those 10 points and you will be a priority geography. I'm originally from Chandler, Arizona. And so here we see at the bottom, Chandler, Arizona does not qualify. But you'll see that there's another sheet. And on the third sheet that says calculations, you'll be able to understand exactly what is going on beneath the, the substance of the yes or no calculations. Once you go to the calculation slide, you can see what is happening to determine if you're a priority jurisdiction or not. So to look at this slide, we can start on Autuga County. We see that Autuga County under priority geography does say yes. 
which means that they are a priority geography under the pro-housing NOFO. And we know that they are because under the housing affordability factor, it is marked green. And if we look closer, we can see that their housing affordability factor of 1.16 surpasses the, strict, that the housing affordability fa factor state threshold for Alabama of 1.14. We can see differently that the Bola County does meet both the housing affordability factor, but also the off pace factor. Here, the off pace factor means that your affordable housing is not keeping up with your population growth. The one in the middle, none of these meet in this snippet, but the housing problems factor is the one with widespread housing cost burden or substandard housing. And so when you go into this spreadsheet, you should be able to determine exactly how your, how your geography qualifies or does not qualify for the program. I wanna emphasize that these are for priority geographies, that this is a binary to get 10 points, but does not exclude you from submitting an application. It is not an eligibility criteria, but it is a priority geography criteria. And with that, we'll take any questions that you may have. Thanks again to Greg Miller from uh, the Office of Policy Development and Research. Um, next up, we want to say a few words about additional resources that HUD has related to barriers to affordable housing. Addressing barriers to affordable housing is a key topic for HUD, and we have multiple additional resources to support communities in understanding what barriers they face and in understanding potential strategies to address those barriers. Um, so a few resources we want to point you towards. One is that HUD has a website now dedicated to barriers to affordable housing. Uh, this is a landing page for barriers that's located at the link shown on your screen. Um, or if you just Google HUD barriers to affordable housing, you'll, you'll find the web page uh, dedicated to barriers. And on this page, you'll find a list of common barriers faced by communities. Uh, and you'll also find recorded technical assistance sessions. These are from HUD's TA providers and HUD grantees. And these cover topics such as an overview of barriers to affordable housing, uh, data resources and tools to identify and address barriers, uh, existing research on barriers, so what does the research say about best practices for addressing those barriers, and finally, uh, community engagement, and strategies and promising practices for engaging the community to address your barriers. Um, so we do encourage you to check out the, the webpage uh, for barriers to affordable housing. You'll find a lot of helpful resources there. The other resource we want to direct your attention to is uh, that HUD recently released our Affordable Housing Supply Toolkit. This is located on the HUD Exchange site. This toolkit highlights creative models to expand the supply of affordable housing using CPD's annual funds and other financing streams. The resource includes a pair of guidebooks designed to provide introductory level information to those who want to understand more about affordable housing supply and strategies to address the affordability gap for low-income residents. The guidebooks connect equity considerations to the development of affordable housing and address the need to cultivate and maintain partnerships to, to ensure community support. Case studies interspersed throughout these guidebooks demonstrate the successful outcome of local efforts to enact policy change and deploy innovative financing strategies for affordable housing development across the country. Um, so we do want to encourage you to make use of these helpful resources as you consider addressing your barriers to affordable housing. Um, I think we can move to the next slide. We are now transitioning to the Q&A portion of the webinar. This will feature Jesse hanford Combs, the Director of HUD's Office of Block Grant Assistance, and uh, Greg Miller from HUD's Office of Policy Development and Research. Um, before we begin, I want to say a word about uh, HUD Reform Act. So the, uh, just so everyone knows, HUD competitions are governed by the HUD Reform Act, which means that the NOFO is the definitive source for all information, for all questions and answers. Uh, we cannot interpret the NOFO, but we can tell you whether something is in the NOFO or whether it's in the CDBG framework that the NOFO relies on. Um, finally, the HUD Reform Act does prohibit us from addressing questions related to prospective proposals or applications. So, questions in the nature of whether a certain activity would be eligible or competitive or not something that we can answer. That said, we will do our very best to answer the questions that we can. So please check the Pro Housing page for updated FAQs in the near future. We're gonna have an updated FAQ sheet that incorporates questions that we have received over the past few weeks as we've begun our webinar series. Uh, so keep an eye on that and tune into the subsequent webinars if we're not able to answer your question today. Uh, with that, let's begin. 
Um, so, Greg, I think this first question is for you. Uh, Greg indicated in his presentation uh, that we're measuring below 100% of the AMI. Will a specific breakdown be taken in, into account, so 80%, 60%, et cetera, or is it just generally under 100% AMI? Yeah, thanks for that question. So for purposes of calculating the priority geographies and jurisdictions under this program, and this is solely for calculating those priority jurisdictions, Two of the factors are calculated at the 80% ham side breakdown, and that is due to the way that we are given the data through the CHAS data. And one of the factors is computed at 100%. The one factor computed at 100% ham side is the substandard housing factor and widespread housing cost burden. The two other factors that have to do with affordable and available units would be com are, are computed at the 80% breakdown. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Uh, next question is for Jesse. Um, the, uh, the asker writes, please define acute demand. Jesse. Hi, everybody. This is Jesse Hanforth Um The NOFO doesn't def use acute demand as a defined term. What it does is define acute demand by using the data. Um, if you have a priority geography as defined by the data, then our data is showing that it meets the um, definition of acute demand. So it's an operational definition, in other words, instead of one in narrative form. Thanks, Jesse. Um, we have another question for you, Jesse. Uh, the three indicators drastically changed for our community in 2020, and the data set in the spreadsheet covers 2009 to 2019. Um, if we demonstrate acute need, but are not listed in the spreadsheet, can we qualify for the 10 points? Um, we are using our data set for the 10 points, but the acute demand factor has uh, uh, 13 points. And there's a narrative where you can um, respond and describe um, your geography and the data and um, and work to pick up those those points. Thanks, Jesse. Um, next up, one person asks, and I, I can just take this one. One person asks where the link to the spreadsheet is. Um, if we haven't already, we can put it in the chat. But uh, that spreadsheet can be found on the Pro Housing website. Uh, the link looks like it's made it into the chat. Uh, you could also just Google HUD Pro Housing. Um, look for on that web page, FY23 Pro Housing uh, List of Priority Geographies, and, and this, it'll pop up. So thanks for that one. Um, let's move on to this next one here. Um, and I think Jesse will direct this to you. Um, if your county is a priority geography, but the municipality is not, if the county is the applicant, how is the qualification determined? Okay, I see actually a couple of questions in the chat along these lines. Um, so if the county is a, a priority geography, but within it, a municipality is showing is not a priority geography, you must remember what the NOFO says is that you must uh, uh, primarily serve uh, priority geographies with your, your approach, your proposed um, actions. Um, the other question that's related to this is, uh, somebody asked in the chat, I think something along the lines of, their county showed as not a priority, but they are a merged city county government and the place showed as a priority. That's an artifact of the data set you would you know, you you pick the data that shows it the date the area you want to serve is a priority geography. Greg might be able to tell you why that happens, but we're basically saying if there is data supporting you being a priority geography, use that data. Within our data set. You may be muted. 
Um, listen, hey, everybody, I wanted to let the, the people that are attending know that um, we're actually all working together as a team to sort out all the questions that you're putting in and we're getting quite a lot of questions. Um, so that we can make sure we get all the ones answered that we're allowed to answer. So there might be a couple of little pauses where we're sorting out who's going to answer what. Um, so just stay tuned. We're going to, we're going to get to everybody's questions. We hope. Yeah, Jesse, that, that, that is right. And I think it's because there are different thresholds also at the county and the place level. Those thresholds are computed separately um, across the nation and, and, and within states. Um, I did see that there was a question on to a reminder of where this data is coming from. This is the comprehensive housing affordability strategies data. Um, you can type in CHAS HUD, C-H-A-S, and that is the, the data we're using. It's, it's the same data often used in consolidated plans, um, and, and that is the data used for the calculations of the thresholds. Hey, um, somebody asked a related question even to the ones I just um, asked sort of the inversion. Um, what if you have a county that uh, qualifies as priority geography, a place within it, a municipality that does not, and the location of what you want to do is in the, the place that does not qualify as priority geography, but it serves the place that does qualify. You're going to have to explain that really carefully, but that is a possible scenario if what you're doing is honestly serving the priority geography but is located outside it somehow that's a tricky use case but it is possible Thank we're looking to who you're serving um so I, I hope that was helpful for folks i know we're getting a lot of questions in, in the chat about uh that priority geography question so thanks jesse uh, this one is also similar to one we touched on earlier, but since we've gotten this a few times, I, I think we can um, you know, sort of hammer this one home too. Um, so I, I think, Jesse, this is for you. What if because of recent changes in the economic status of our location, we can justify uh, some current conditions that demonstrate acute demand? Can we provide that justification in the application? Um, two, two questions to unpack here. One is, again, we're using our data set for the auto, automatic TED points. Two, yes, you can provide the additional information that you have and go after it in the three-point narrative. Thanks, Jesse. Um, one quick one that I've just seen come through the chat, a priority geography is 10 points out of how many total points? Uh, the need factor is 35 points, and uh, the total amount of points in the rating factors add up to 100. Um, Jesse, let's move on to this next question for you. Are, uh, are state housing finance agencies eligible for this grant? Um, or maybe more generally, are state agencies eligible for this grant? Um, is Robert on? This is really a state CDBG kind of question. Robert, um, governors for states can designate the agency, the state agency that uh, administers their um, programs, correct? Yeah, that's he here. Let's see. This is Robert Peterson. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, that would default to um, the Housing Community Development Act definition of the, the state. Uh, which does include an agency designated by the, the governor. So, um, I know in the home program, we see housing finance agencies fairly typically, but in CDBG, um, we don't see them as often. Um, we will triple check that um, and, and uh, get an FAQ out about that. But uh, provisionally, I would say that if a governor designates a state agency as if you know, the same as it you can do in state CDBG, that that would work. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same agency as state CDBG, but it has to be designated the same way.
Um, here's a question that looks like it's come through a couple of times. Um, this is for Jesse. Is there a cutoff score for awarding based on the rating factors? Um, the NOFO does not include a cutoff score. Hey, I'm seeing one question um, asking if a city has to have this priority jurisdiction to apply. You do not have to have priority status to apply. It is it is simply just to receive those 10 points. And, and I want to make sure people are not confused about that. Um, you do not need to have priority status to apply. The priority status item is actually a, a direct pass through from the law. So this is something Congress told HUD is to include priority geographies, and they told us what to base it on. But the law didn't say we could only fund priority geographies. I see when uh, talking about TIF or TID funds as match dollars. Um, we, um, we allow non-federal funds that you can uh, firmly commit, firmly obligate. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think we name a source that you can or can't include within that class. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, the team's flagged another one for me. The environmental review does not need to be done and, and come in with your application. We are using 24 CFR part 50 or 24 CFR part 58, depending on whether you are not a CDBG entitlement or whether you are a unit of general local government or a CDBG entitlement. Um, and the environmental reviews would be completed prior to use of funds, but after I did any award. Which is the same um, as the regular CDBG answer. Jesse, we have received a few questions in the chat asking about uh, matching funds. Can you maybe describe the difference between match and leverage and, and talk about how leverage works in the pro housing competition? Right. Match would be a required match, a go, no go decision for, for funding. You either you had to show up with your match or you couldn't be considered. Leverage is a scored factor based on um, the percentage, the proportion of leverage that you brought. Um, and uh, so if you don't bring any leverage, you don't pick up any of the points. If you bring a high proportion of leverage, you can pick up more points. And so that's the main difference. Um, and we also made an exception, and in this one to what we've done in the past with CDBG competitions, and we asked for non-federal funds or firmly committed um, monetized staff hours for the um, project, because we know a lot of this is likely to be involved staff time. Are there other like match leverage kind of questions? 
Um, there were a few. One is asking about documentation required. Yeah, basically, a lawyer needs to say that it's firmly committed. However, you show us that the funds are firmly committed. Um, Jesse, I think I'll, I'll move on to a non leverage question for you. Um, can funding be used for removing barriers to access affordable housing that has already been built? I find that question confusing. I'm not quite sure how to answer it. Um, I think we would direct the audience to the eligible activities in uh, the NOFO that uh, provide a, a list of sample eligible activities um, that I hope would be helpful. Yeah, if you want to clarify in the chat, um, I, I don't quite know what to do with that question because there has to have been access to the site to build the housing. So maybe it, it maybe it's an infrastructure question, but I don't I don't know. Um, for Greg, I, I think I think we've answered this, but uh, it, it seems like it's come in a few times. So Greg, could you maybe remind us the source of the data that we pulled for these calculations? Yes, that's that's the Chaz data um, from HUD, and and yeah, I saw another question come through uh, to clarify. These these calculations it are all um, the affordable and available is calculations from that Chaz data. It's it's um it's it's a HUD calculation that we do using the Chaz data. Um, and then and then we also use population data um, for the for the population change from 2019 to 2009. That is separate from Chaz data. I see, I see another agency question. Um, the, one of the reasons we're using DRGR is because it's easier for us if a state wants to designate a different agency than is handling their CDBGDR or their CDBG um, programs, then, then that's possible. We can accommodate that. With cities and counties, the, um, the chief elected official, um, or sometimes a city or county manager, you know, the chief official, um, but usually chief elected signs, um, and they can, you know, use any of their staff to administer. We're not trying to dictate that, but you're going to have to convince us, you know, that you're when you're doing your soundness of approach and your capacity factors that, you know, that you meet all the things we're asking in the NOFA. Um, leverage funds can be other federal grant funds if that program, that federal program, allows its funds to be used as match. A lot of them don't. And we're not experts on which programs do or don't, except <coughs> we can tell you that CDBG uh, does have the statutory exception to be uh, allowed to use as match as if it's local funds. I see there's a question asking about what a place and a county is. These these are census designations as we receive them through census. Um, and so in certain areas, as we've discussed earlier, as a certain example of a place and a county, um, it, it might it might look a, a little different depending on uh, what jurisdiction you're applying as. Um, we have a multi-jurisdictional Entity question, multi-jurisdictional means jurisdictions. They have to be um, uh, actual units of general local government who are banding together. So it wouldn't qualify um, multiple nonprofits covering a lot of geography. 
Um, but um, they can come in as, you know, part of the approach with a multi jurisdictional entity that involve the jurisdictions. Or they can partner with 1 of the uh, jurisdictions. Um, to cover. A priority geography or multiple priority geographies. Um, there are some states who have uh, programs with the same name, pro housing designation. You don't know, don't have to have a designation from anybody. That you know, HUD doesn't designate <laughs> pro housing jurisdictions, um, so that's not a condition of our competition, our pro housing competition. I'm sorry, we all thought this was a great term, like all more or less at the same time. So. Um, no, you don't have to have that designation. Um. Residential rehabilitation, we are asked if residential rehabilitation is an eligible activity. It is listed in the NOFO as an eligible activity. Colin, are you seeing some other stuff or Greg? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the questions we have, um, I think a lot of them relate to the priority geography topic that we have addressed. Um, I am seeing one general one, Greg, um, would you mind just mentioning what the three uh, data points that we measured were? Just a quick, quick glance at those three. Yeah, the, the the presentation covered those those three factors. Um, one of the factors is widespread housing cost burden and substandard housing, which measures your prevalence of of those those two phenomena of of widespread housing cost burden and substandard housing. Um, another factor measures the amount of affordable and available units for 80% HAMFI for the number of households at 80% HAMFI. And the third one measures the change in the number of affordable and available units from 2019 to 2009 as compared to the change in population. Thanks, Greg. Um, one question I have for you, Jesse, that I, I hope will be helpful for our uh, uh, attendees on the call. Uh, the version of the NOFO on the pro housing website right now is uh, technically the NOFO preview. When will the final published NOFO uh, be released or published? Um, I believe we're on track for the first week in September is the planning date. And we will post on the pro housing website and um, let everybody know when it gets into um, grant solutions. Um, and probably put out a blast on various um, email lists and stuff like that. Um, somebody asked, what is CHAS data, C-H-A-S? Um, Robert, if you're still around, you want to take a swing at that? Sorry about that. I was getting back to the right screen. Uh, our CHAS data is published um, by HUD, uh, and the acronym stands for, kind of, yeah, just to be sure, Comprehensive Affordable, Comprehensive Housing Affordability Strategy. Uh, 
Um, the expected deadline, we got a question or two about what's the expected deadline once we do publish. We're shooting for October 30th. I know it's one day short, but I didn't want a Halloween one deadline. Great. Um, well, I, I think with uh, with all those questions answered, we're going to go ahead and close out for the afternoon. Uh, thank you so much to Jesse and Greg for helping to answer our questions. And thank you so much to our attendees for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I do want to point out a couple of things before you hop off. Uh, we have another webinar coming up next week. That is Thursday, August 24th. And that webinar will focus on FAQs. So not just questions related to data, but any questions you may have if they are frequently asked, if they are questions that have come in through these webinars or through the Pro Housing Inbox, we will do our best to answer them there. Um, so please do attend that. As I mentioned earlier, the link to sign up for that is currently on the Pro Housing webpage. So please visit the Pro Housing webpage and, and use that link to sign up for next Thursday's FAQ webinar. Um, don't forget, too, that in addition to our webinars, you can always email us at cdbg-prohousing at HUD.gov, that's cdbg-prohousing at HUD.gov. So send us your questions there anytime, and our team will do our very best to get you a response by the next business day. Um, with all that said, we, again, really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. We hope to see you all next week and wish you all a great rest of your afternoon. So thanks so much, and we'll talk to you soon.